Yo, how you doing? My name is Ice Grenade, and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to have random sounds in your map that are auto activating. And the other thing about this script is that it will prevent the other sounds from playing, so you don't get overlapping sounds when using these. So if we walk on these, you'll see it pop up. There we go. It started playing the music. If we walk on other ones, it's not playing them because the script is smart enough to stop it. Right. So that was it finished, we can go on another one, you see that has the same effect. I just think it's great to have it set up like this so that it doesn't have simultaneous sounds playing. Right, and then we can go on, let's go on the other green one. Because you see that okay guys, so the first thing I'm going to mention is you're going to want to use some copyright free royalty free music make sure that it is completely license free so that you don't get into trouble by using some copyrighted material once you have some music i already have some music on my hard drive i'm going to be using this whatever cu track and if we just play it from here you'll see that i've pretty much cut it i think i cut it to there and what I did is I made sure that the project rate over there in the bottom left corner is set to 48,000. It's important that you do this, otherwise it will throw an error at you later on. So make sure you set it to 48,000. And we're using Audacity. That is another program that you'll want to have. The next thing I will recommend is for this tutorial, I'm just using that little segment to show you, but you may be using the whole song. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to have a nice fade in. If you don't have a nice fade in, then it won't sound very nice in game. You'll notice a lot of sounds in the game, unless they're quick reactive sounds, do have a nice fade in and it works really well. So if, it ha if, the, if the tune starts off very sudden and jumpy, you might want to just select the first few seconds or so go to effects and go to fade in. You'll see that that's made it very gradual. You'll see if I do it here as well, uh, you'll see that better. See how that faded in. Yeah, you don't want to do that in the middle of the track, but I was just showing you because it was already faded in, probably didn't notice any difference. So also we're gonna go over here, we'll see that it's faded out at the end. You're gonna to want to do that as well. So you have it faded in at the start and faded out at the end. And doing that will just help make the track sound a lot better in game the next thing to do is to make sure that the that the track is is loud enough in audacity if it's not loud enough then in game it doesn't matter if you turn it right up to the top it's not going to be loud enough you can quickly change the volume by going to effect once you select it all go to equalization and just click anywhere and drop it here so if we go down it'll, it'll reduce it if we go up it will it'll raise it so if we go to six decibels, you'll see that it's actually maxing out in loads of places. And you start hearing that rattly sound. You don't want that. You never really ever want to see any of these waveforms maxing out at the top. It's not a good practice. So the best thing you can do is try and you see how high that one is there you don't really want it to go any higher than that this track hasn't actually had any equalization done to it but let's just show you for example that if the track was about yeah if the track was about this quiet and you'd want to turn it up for the game so you can go to effects equalization and we can put that up by about i don't know about nine decibels or so so that's much better. You could even go a bit higher, just try not to have it max out at the top. Okay, and the last thing to note is once you have your track how you like it, you're gonna to wanna to save it in the correct format and in the correct location. So in this case, I'm gonna use the export selected audio. And if we go to our Black Ops 3 folder, you're gonna to wanna to put it in your sound asset folder. And then after that, it's down to you whether you just put it here and then reference it in the sound alias or give it a custom folder. I recommend that you give it a custom folder called custom, or maybe you're putting this in a particular a map so you might want to give it the map name like skylands or the tron map or the twisted mind map in this case it is for yeah i'm just going to put it in custom so we go down here and we've got all these different sounds i'm just going to show you this one as a demo so i'm going to call this demo one this is the next part you want to save as type wav microsoft signed 16-bit pcm there are loads of different options you can pick 
but the signed 16-bit PCM is the one that you want to use in Radiant and in your custom zombie map. So save that and then it will give you another dialogue. And here it will ask you whether you want to edit the metadata before you save it. And you do because if you save it with metadata, there's a chance it won't work. And this is in my own personal experience. I've, I've saved stuff with metadata and it hasn't worked and then I've cleared it and it's worked. So I recommend that as you're saving it, you want to click that clear button. There wasn't actually any metadata here, so I didn't need to do that. But click clear if there is any writing in any of these fields and then press OK. Right, so we can close this down and we can head over to the sound alias. Okay guys, so I'm now in my sound alias file. Yours might not look like this. You might only see one sound alias here. To get here, you're gonna to wanna to go to your Black Ops 3 route, go to share, raw, sound, aliases, and open up the user alias CSV. You may wish to open this up in a spreadsheet, but be wary and do not let it overwrite the format. Make sure that you save it as a CSV and that it keeps the CSV typical formatting. Uh, I don't have Microsoft Office on this computer, so I'm gonna be using OpenOffice to show you this as well. OpenOffice is just a free version of Microsoft Excel, really. And you see here it's saying, oh, what sort of formatting do you want? It's already said comma. If it hasn't said comma, then you wanna separate by comma and open it up this way. And here it will show you all of the different round sounds in the table. And you're gonna to wanna to create a new one here. So we have the test sound, I'm going to do insert row, and we called it demo1, that's what we're going to refer to it as, and we put it in the custom demo1.wav, yeah we put it in the custom folder and it's called demo1 and it's .wav as the extension. The next thing is we want to give it that default template, so I'm just going to type uin underscore mod. The next one is do we want to put it in a channel? So the bus here is okay when you press start and you go to sound and you go to edit the sounds in game, what slider do you want it to be attached to? And there's only really two sliders that you're going to be working with making zombies. If I keep going to the right here and move it so I'm not in the way, you'll see here that I've used bus effects and bus music. As you might be able to tell the bus effects will make the slider move on the effect slider so that if you give it effects it will move then but we're actually adding music in so we're going to use bus music and i'm just going to add that to that part there and we're going to slide along over here the next one is pan type this is where we're going to be telling it what type of sound it is you can type in 2d or you can just leave it and i believe it'll just take a 2d sound by default so we can just leave that like that pausable is another important factor that you're going to want to add in and we're going to say yes in this case because what pausable means and you might know just from looking at what it's called is when you pause the game do you want the music to stop or continue and in most cases you want it to stop there are very limited reasons for having it not pausable and by default it is not pausable so you want to type in yes there and then we are pretty much done apart from one last thing we scroll back to the rns field we have the volume min and the volume max these settings here will determine how loud the sound's gonna be, and it can vary. So each time it plays a sound, it might play loud or quiet, and it's a scale. And if we set it to the same value, it means it's always gonna play at that volume. You might wanna tinker with this setting, but we're just gonna set it to 9090 and save it here. So we're done and we wanna save this. These settings here are for the 3D sounds, so you don't need to, to worry with these ones. But yeah, we need to set the volume. Okay, so I'm gonna save that. It's gonna say, do we wanna keep the current format or save it in an ODF format? We don't wanna save it in an ODF format, regardless of what it's telling us about formatting, because we want it to keep the current formatting. So we're gonna say, keep current formatting. Now, the next important thing is you want to close this window. I know that doesn't sound like much, but if you don't close that window and you go to compile it, it's not gonna compile the sounds because it'll be complaining that it's open in another program. So we've closed that down and now you can see Sublime saying, hey, this file's been updated. Should we reload it? I'm gonna click yes, and you can see that it's actually added in that line here. And we don't need to worry about where we're putting in values between these commas because it's all done nicely from using a spreadsheet application.
Okay, so we're done here. We can actually close this down. Sublime is not intrusive, so you can actually leave Sublime open while it's compiling, and that's fine. It's only the calculation application or any spreadsheet application will overrule the file, and you need to make sure they're closed before you compile. So, moving on, let's go into Radiant, and I'm going to show you what we need to do to set up the rest of this. A good example for when you might want to use these is perhaps playing music when players have passed a certain area, perhaps playing audio cues for certain parts of the map. So when they go over something, it will it will explain what's going on. In my Twisted Minds map, I'm gonna be using this as a horror music sound so that when you walk into the main building, it will play. So we are in Radiant now, and the only thing you're gonna to need to do is press B on the keyboard, go to NC Browser, go down to where it says Trigger, and drag in a Trigger Multiple. So we've got this trigger multiple and you can put it anywhere as long as a player intersects it then it'll be fine then the music will play we're going to need to give this two kvps so if you press n to go to the entity info the first kvp we're going to need to give it is to call it music multi music multi is what i've called it in the script so you're going to make loads of these around the map and they're all going to contain the target name of music multi but anyway, let's go back to the first one because we need to set up another KVP. So we're going to set up a custom KVP. So if you go on add KVP, this little dialogue will pop up. Then we're going to need to type in script underscore string. And this is where you'll be entering in the music alias that we created earlier. And we called it demo one. That's what we're going to refer to it as. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm just going to press add there. So that means now that when you walk into this, is going to play the alias music one. We can also put one there and I've just duplicated that by holding control alt and left clicking. That is a way of pasting things around the map. And you could also copy by pressing space and moving it or you could copy by doing control C, control V and then moving it. There are many ways to copy in this game. I just prefer doing the control alt left click to paste to where you, you click. Right, so I'm going to go down and give this one a different value. So instead of music one for the script string, we're going to give it music two. I've set up three small music sounds. You're going to want to put your own long featured music tracks in here or whatever. And or you can literally play any music sound that you have in the user alias here. You're going to want to give it 2D sounds. Don't give it 3D sounds. And when you finish pasting them all, so I'm just going to delete these because I already have them here. You could create multiple ones if you wish. In fact, I will just create another set here like so and save your game. Right, let's go and grab that code and we'll add it in. You're going to need your map name GSC open and to get there, you want to go to the launcher and open it up here. So you can right click on the map that you're making, go to open map folder, go to scripts ZM and open up your map name GSC in your preferred editor. Okay, so once we got this open, I'm just gonna put it on the right hand side of the screen and I'm gonna put the scripts on the left hand side of the screen. And then what we need to do is we need to copy lines five and six and paste it at the bottom of your main function. So here you see we have the level path disk type path disk original. So after that, we wanna paste it there and I'm just going to neaten it up a little bit like so. There we go, we have that in there, that is fine. The next thing we need to do is copy the code from line nine all the way to the bottom. Don't forget the last script bracket. Copy that and we're gonna paste that here at the very end of your script file. So there we go, we can see that, yep, yeah, it got everything, perfect. So what you need to do now is save this file. Don't forget to save it. I've just undone my changes because I had some other functions in here. And what you may want to do is, for testing, it's nice to have the little feedback showing you on the screen what's happening. But when you publish your map on the workshop, you're gonna to wanna to go to these lines here. You see where it says hero, you're gonna to wanna to comment that out. And to do that, you just put two forward slashes there. You can do that as well with the one that shows you this found music end, two forward slashes, and do it here, print line, and this one as well, and this one as well, and this one as well. In fact, you can even just delete that last else function if you wish. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just gonna say, yeah, just comment these out. That will make it show no text, and it will just 
come to work how we want it to work. So I'm going to save it here and let's go over to the launcher and you're going to want to compile and link your map. So I'm going to compile and link it and then we'll go check out the final changes. Okay guys, so here we are. We're back in the game. You can see we've got the extra pads that we just added in. So if we walk on these, you'll see it pop up. There we go. It started playing the music. If we walk on other ones, it's not playing them because the script is smart enough to stop it. We take some money. I don't think we should take the money. Right. So that was it finished. We can go on another one. You see that it has the same effect. I just think it's great to have it set up like this so that it doesn't have simultaneous sound playing. So yeah guys, I hope that this has helped you out. I hope that you can make use of this script. I know a few people have been asking for this and today I've been working on trying to just foolproof it and make it a, a solid piece of code. I know there's probably a much better way of writing it and I'm still learning myself really. But yeah, I hope this uh, I hope this helps you out. So this is pretty much it. Take it easy everyone and I will catch you on the next one. So don't forget to smash a like, subscribe to stay tuned, hit that little notification icon if you want to stay updated. Other than that, take it easy, stay freezy, and I'll catch you on the next one guys. Right, see ya. Layers and filters. So this is gonna be something essential that you're gonna need to use as you're mapping, especially when your map gets bigger and your computer can't handle the whole map radius. So here we have the little new map that I'm working on at the moment. And this is the haunted sign, and it's just very early days, but basically what I'm gonna show you is if you press F on the keyboard so you can to right click and go to the filter menu this way. You have all of these different properties. And this is the way to help clip things out. You can see that I've got clips hidden. So if you look over there, you see the red things. I can press that button and then hide them. This is just one way to make it easier to go around the map and make things and basically thin things out. Say that you